asking students to turn in all their pages except for the two extra covers which will be turned in separately as a single PDF and if you have established uh, uh, your document the way it was demonstrated at the beginning of the semester you likely have all your different InDesign documents the different parts of your magazine as part of different InDesign documents now, if you were actually going to print your booklet as a booklet, uh, you would have to make sure that your pages were also divisible by either four or two. And if you think about that, if you think about a, um, a uh, magazine that is bound with a square binding, or what is called in the business a perfect binding, sort of like a paperback book, you know, that blocked off uh, spine that you can uh, print on, uh, every sheet in that book ha is divisible by, uh, is, it has two sides, so it is, um, so it only even numbers of pages are possible. And if it's a saddled stitched magazine or if a staple goes through the spine and it's called a saddle stitch because uh, the magazine just sort of sit on the stapling machine like a saddle and then the saddle goes through uh, it has uh, it's going to be divisible by four no matter what else you do uh, because when you fold a piece of paper in half and you stack it together into a book each one of those folded pieces of paper has four faces uh, so obviously for electronic turn in uh, you don't have to do that but you it is something to think about uh, if you have a career in print design uh, but the best way to get your magazine together is to create a what's called an InDesign book and I'm gonna create a new book and to create a document a book or a library um, I've used all three of those so I'm gonna just create a new book and I will call it uh, just demo book and here it is and this is a book with nothing in it yet but we will populate it with a couple of things and you can also park it right in your dock if you want right with your tools and it can be one of your regular menus uh, but before I make my book I'm going to have to do a couple of other things and that is make sure all my documents rearrange because one of the things the book is going to do is it's going to automatically number my pages for me and if you've created uh, uh, a auto page number it will populate throughout your entire book when you turn your documents into a book uh, and it's also going to give me allow me to generate PDFs of my entire book at once so what I'm gonna do first though is it will rearrange your pages when you have a book um, it knows that uh, books follow the rules I just mentioned that every every page faces another page and so if I have a situation like this where this article is ending with a spread but this one is which comes immediately after that one or is planned to come immediately after that one in the book starts with a single page so if I were to bring this document without making any changes into InDesign uh, it would rearrange it so that this would be the left hand of the spread and this one would come up and that one would be the right hand and it would rearrange it in ways that I don't want so I want to make sure that there is a page to go opposite that one and it doesn't matter which document I add that page to but I will add it to this one so I'll just say page new page and one of the things uh, uh, I recommend and some students are doing two single pages for um, their table of contents is to give your magazine a more realistic look is to just bring in ads for those blank pages uh, and you don't have to make the ads yourself they could be scanned and there are various sources for advertising on the internet so I just did a quick web search for an ad and I am just going to go to my desktop and there is an ad and let's just make it fit it's uh, not gorgeous but that's fine it'll look fine without it and then now that this ends with a right hand page 
I can, and by the way, this already has numbers because these documents were previously part of another book, but they can be part of this book too. So now I'm going to start adding documents to my book. And I am probably, uh, you could start with cover, but cover will be part of your numbering scheme if you do. It doesn't matter hugely uh, uh, for class purposes whether you include cover, uh, but traditionally in a magazine, the first page with a number is the interior first page. Uh, in fact, uh, magazine designers refer to the covers as cover one uh, for the front cover, cover two for the inside front, cover three. Uh, for the inside back and cover four for the back cover and the cover is often not always but often printed on a slightly nicer quality of paper uh, to make the book seem a little bit nice and it's not part of the numbering that's not true for newspapers newspapers usually start numbering right on the front cover uh, but magazines do not so I'm going to in this case start with uh, just adding documents so I am going to go to my FOB, that's the front of the book, and that includes things like brief sections. And then I can add that, and it is going to number that from 1 to 11. So I know that that is ending with a spread because the first page is by itself, and so it's like uh, 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 10 pages of uh, spreads, and that one front page, which is depending on your magazine, an ad or a table of contents or something like that. And then you can just add another one. And let's see if I can remember the order. It doesn't really matter that what order this really came in. What next order was, uh, I think it was that one. And then you can see it just starts to automatically number. I'm not going to do the next one. Let's just add hit my plus sign again or I could go to the drop down and add a document and let's just pick uh, that one and that was not in the original order I'm skipping a few of the documents just for demonstration purposes uh, but it is going to number this automatically based on my page count so let's add one more document and that would be this one, which is the one I just added a page to. And let's finally add that back of book. Okay, so I am at 42 pages. Uh, which would not work with a staple. It would have to be 44. It would have to be divisible by four, but it could work with a um, spine book. And then I can uh, just export this as a PDF, exactly as I would a uh, uh, out of InDesign itself. So if one of these is highlighted, it will ask you um, export uh, selected document for print, uh, and I don't want to do that, so I'm going to, I'm sorry, that's a little bit off, so I'm just going to now say export book to PDF with none of them selected. And I just shift clicked it at time select it. And this comes in, and we can say demo book, and that's uh, a fine name for it, and I'm going to say... Uh, Select Adobe PDF print, save, and for our purposes, high quality print is fine. Um, there are a few other options. Uh, and for viewing, I know that I want this to be viewed as spreads and with a pager, so I'm going to select viewing uh, two up continuous with a cover page as my view. And uh, I can also uh, Instead, do it as separate files, which might be useful because most presses want you to upload separate files. But for our purposes, we'll just leave it as a booklet. And then I'll say export. And it'll give you any warnings, just as it would with any other PDF. I happen to know that these fonts are not actually used. Uh, so I'll just say OK. Uh, it could be you know, a stray box somewhere. And then it just starts generating your PDF.
and I have my PDF set to open automatically. And, oop, wrong direction. So there it is, and we can just flip through it. Currently in the process of redesigning this magazine. There it is with my ad, and there's the rest of it.